In this question, we have a spring hung vertically from a fixed point, And on the other end, you have a mass hanging here. So once you hang this mass on the spring, it's going to extend already. So you have this length L already with some extension of the spring. Extension. By the way, if you haven't tried this video yet, pause, not try this video, try this question. Pause first, go try it out, see what you can read, and then come back and we do it together. Mm, then you will have some pre-brain, some stuff. So you have a mass that is now displaced downwards, you pull it down, let go, and it starts to oscillate. The subsequent motion of the mass is simple harmonic. So now they give us a graph, okay, this is length, uh, length of the spring. And they actually plot an interesting graph, which is the variation of length against time t. So the spring is very long here, becomes very short length, long length, short length, long, short long, and that's your simple harmonic motion. So what do we need to know from the graph? Okay, first things. State one time at which the mass is moving with maximum speed. So maximum speed actually happens when you're, you're passing through the equilibrium position. So the spring is going to go up and down, right? It will pass through equilibrium with the faster speed. So equilibrium here is at equilibrium, which is where there is zero extension. So the midpoint. So we look at our graph here. We need to see what are the times where you pass through the Zero point. Where is the zero point? It looks like, if I see correctly, that's going to be right here at 12. So I'm going to draw a dotted line to remind myself, this is the equilibrium position. So you should go up by a sum amount, amplitude, you should also come down by the same amount. You can double check that to be sure. Okay, so where do we pass by the middle? There's a few positions. I'm going to mark them as green. So this one point, this is where you have maximum velocity. Here also, ma. Here also. Here also. And here also. You can pick one point. It can be at 0 0.1, 0. I think this is 3, right? 0 0.3. Any of this choice, choose one. So I think I'm going to choose the first one. All right, 0 0.1. So let's go. 0 0.1 here. 0 0.1. Could you write the other answers though? Totally. You can 0 0.1, you can put 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Oi, what's happening? Uh, 0 0.7 or 0 0.9. Any of these also okay. One mark. Key idea, you need to know that that is an equilibrium position. Okay, what else do we need to know? So we now need to find one time where the spring has maximum elastic potential energy. For a spring, in case you forget, uh, elastic potential energy, we can take this from our knowledge from AS, that's fine. We can have half kx squared. Remember this? Or maybe not k. La. Half fx also can. K la, half fx, easier to remember. So that means if you want maximum, that means your extension has to be the maximum. So extension has to be maximum. So that means your spring will become very long. So longest spring length, L. Okay. Normal spring. Extended spring. Nah, this one is extended very long already. So this is when you have the highest elastic potential energy. Let's go and look at the graph. Be careful. Ah. This graph is length of the spring. Not extension, length against time. So we can see where is the spring the longest. Looks like it's going to be right here. Very long. What's this length? 14.5, I think. Longest length, which means extension is largest, which means G, not GPE, sorry, wrong. E elastic potential energy is maximum. So there's a few points, it's up there, there's also possible point here or point here, a few x points. As long as it's any of these longest lengths, that's when you'll be longest. So this is 0, 0 0.4, 0 0.8. Choose any of those answers, you'll be good. So I'm going to choose, I think I'll write the first one. 
I will choose eh zero ah. Longest length. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go and check this again. Zero, zero point, wait, zero, zero point four, zero point eight. Okay, okay. So we can either write zero point zero, which is legit, or you could write zero point four or zero point eight. Any of these are also okay. So all you need is one mark here. Alright, what else do we need to find here? Let's look and see. Uh, aha, lots of calculations incoming. So now we need to use the data from our graph to determine the motion for the motion of the mass. Firstly, the angular frequency. Now when you see angular frequency, you need to remember how to calculate angular frequency. There's two equations, uh, kind of. You can either use 2 pi f, gotta remember this, or you could use 2 pi over t. Either one works. So I think from the graph, it will be easier to read the period t. If we can find the period, we can calculate. So period means one complete cycle. So I'm going to say, okay, let's start from here. One complete cycle. Oh, I kind of ran off a bit. So I stopped there. That should be about 0 0.4. So I can say one period is 0 0.4. Kind of label that here. This is one full cycle. T, 0 0.4. Let's go back and sub it in. So this will give us 2 pi over 0 0.4. Now please remember, this is in physics. So we like decimal places. We are not maths. Maths will keep your pi, like how many pi, 5 pi or some pi. We don't want the pi's. We want decimal. So right here, you can write here 15.7 or 16. I guess I'll stick with 16 for this. 16, 2 SF radians per second. So one mark is for the final answer. And one mark is if you remember how to calculate angular frequency from our circular motion chapter. Right? If you forgot already, time to revise a bit. Now, not only we need to find angular frequency, we need to find maximum speed. So there are a few ways to go about this. I will show the calculative method and then I'll show the graph method. Not the full thing, but I'll give you a heads up on how you can find it. So speed in simple harmonic motion, there's one equation you can find in the data formula sheet. Gotta go find that treasure if you don't know where it is. Or you can memorize it, I guess. So velocity is omega. There's a plus minus there, but I don't write it. Uh, amplitude square minus the displacement square. This is a general formula for finding velocity of simple harmonic motion, depending on where which position. Ah. So x is the position. So then you need to ask yourself, maximum speed occurs where again? Oh, we kind of, we, we kind of, he's kind of mentioned that here at equilibrium, right? So equilibrium is x0. So if you sub that into this equation here, equilibrium maximum speed is at x equals to 0. So we got to sub that in here. Uh, omega is, I guess we could leave it here. Amplitude square minus 0. So all that's left really, if you want to find maximum speed of this uh, simple harmonic motion, all you need to do is take omega times a. Do you want to memorize this equation? It is up to you. It's a shortcut, but make sure you know where it came from. It came from the one and only v equation that depends on x. All right. So, hmm. okay, let's plug in the values. So omega... V max will be omega. We're going to use a previous value. I think for more accurate answer, I'm going to use my original 15.73 SF so that later I can round my answer to 2 SF here and it's more accurate. Amplitude though, we need to find the amplitude to write inside here. Go back to the graph first. So we know equilibrium position is at 12. This is equilibrium where <laughs> displacement uh, is zero. Maybe we should use a different alphabet. Never mind. Displacement, displacement. This is displacement. Then the highest point is up at 14.5, I think, up here. So this is highest. You go up to 14.5 cm. What is the amplitude? That means you go from 12 cm to 14.5. You got to do a bit of minusing now to find 14.5 to 
minus 12, 2.5 cm. Okay, so our amplitude here is 2.5 cm. You could also take the other side and you should get also the amplitude, which is 2.5 cm. All right, so let's plug that in. Uh, here, ah, there we go. So 2.5, but be careful, it's in centimeter. You need to convert that to meter. Okay, so this whole thing will be in meters. Okay, we're almost done. Plug in the values, press the calculators, you should get about 0 0.3925, which can be routed off to 0 0.39 meters per second. Okay, so one mark is for final answer. One mark is for you either using this equation, just memorized, or substituting uh, displacement zero into your main simple harmonic motion equation. So use of an equation there. Okay, so this is how you can find maximum speed. Another method, which I won't show the whole thing, is using the graph method. So this one using the equation. Maximum speed. So from this graph, this is a displace, related to a displacement time graph. You need to remember your kinematics if you want to use this method because velocity is known as the rate of change of displacement. So otherwise known as d, since it's L, uh, okay, let me have dx dt first. Or in this case, dl dt, delta L delta t. So this is the gradient of this graph. So if you want to find the maximum velocity, you need to find the place with the steepest gradient. Steepest gradient. So for example, if you want to use, let's say, okay, Vmax is the first point. Uh, let's say this one. You need to do like draw a triangle, find the gradient here to find the Vmax. Or you can use this one, draw a nice big triangle, Draw a dotted line, find the gradient. Now you see why it's a bit hard for me to do this method because I it's easier to do on paper. Lah. You need to draw the gradient, make sure you measure properly. So you like you like what you do in labs, draw a triangle, find gradient. That method also works. You can use that. There is a range of accepted values if you use that method. So gradient method. Alright, what else do we need to find? Magnitude of maximum acceleration. Now here we have to use the equation already. There's only one equation for acceleration for simple harmonic motion. Can't remember that one. That is our acceleration equals to negative omega square x. The negative, actually, if you don't write, is also okay because we just want to find the magnitude. It's like taking the absolute value of acceleration. So you can just, just ignore the negative omega square x. Okay, so you're like, okay, let me put the negative, but I take absolute value. Okay, so we can ignore the negative. So this one will be omega used from the front part, right? We already used the omega here. Yeah, we got omega right here. Let's use that down there. Give some space here. So this will be 15.7 square times the displacement. Okay, what is the displacement at maximum acceleration? I think we got to say that when you are having maximum acceleration, it means maximum force. Maximum force means maximum extension of a spring. Because remember, spring is F equals kx, right? So where is the maximum extension? You can kind of look at where is the maximum displacement also from the graph. So you kind of look at this graph. Okay. What's your maximum? The maximum is going to be 2.5 here, lah, which is also the amplitude. Maximum displacement, maximum extension from equilibrium position. So for our, uh, our simple harmonic motion, displacement, maximum is 2.5. So we write 2.5. Actually, I should write this as k times e for extension. Now we confuse uh, too many same alphabets. Ay. So then we take the amplitude, uh, which is 2.5 over here. But don't forget, this is in cm, so we need to times 10, negative 2 to convert to meters. And this in total, you should get a value of 6.162 meters per second. 
which is all six point mm, round off to six point two la. All right, okay. So now we mark one final mark here for accuracy A for accuracy, and one for our use of our equation here at uh, maximum displacement or amplitude. Maximum displacement is called amplitude, okay? So we can combine those ideas together. All right, so last part is a explain question. So now you have a mass suspended from two springs. Just now only got one, now we have two. What's different? Suggest and explain the change, if any, to the period of oscillation of the mass. A numerical answer is not required. So in order to calculate, we need to explain. Before this, previously we have one spring. Let's say it has a spring constant k. Now, you have two springs, k and k. So your effective spring constant, now you can combine this, it's kind of like uh, in the AS, if you remember the chapter of deformation of solid, you know how to combine spring constants. If they are in parallel, that means you can add k plus k. The first spring constant plus the second spring constant, because these are in parallel. They help share the load. So you can kind of combine this to become 2k. And say, hey, there's two springs, but then I combine to form a new spring that has 2k effective spring constant. So it's much more stiffer. Higher spring constant, stiffer. So what about the period oscillation? When it's very stiff, period oscillation will decrease one. So there's a few ways to think about it. The first one is to look, remember the uh, the, the very first video, we look at how to derive an equation for period of a spring, uh, or mass oscillating on a spring. So this one, in case you don't remember, never mind, I'll write for you, 2 pi m over k. From this all, we can kind of conclude that, oh, if you want to change the t because of the k, that means t is proportional to 1 over root k. So if you make the spring constant larger, that means your period will decrease. Okay, so we can say one possible way of answering this is to say that the effective spring constant is now larger. Because we combine two spring mark k plus k. So what happens? So period is shorter. This is one way to explain it. But you say, means what if I didn't memorize the equation, the t equals to 2 pi over m over k over there, then how? Uh, other possible ways you can explain it is to talk about when this spring is stiffer, the force is also going to be larger. So it's f equals to kx. Now it becomes f equals to 2kx. So larger restoring force. So you could also say that there is a larger... Uh, restoring force or acceleration acceleration so very quickly or oh, it will return to equilibrium position so this constantly being pulled back to the middle very quickly so the period is shorter it oscillates a little bit faster so anyway whichever method you choose to explain if you talk about the reason why spring constant is larger then you say oh period is shorter this is two marks. Okay, so I think that's all for this question. Let me revise a little bit of our springs from AS. It's a good revision as well. But that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.